This video will explain how to use the material editor in the program 3ds Max. So the actual material editor is a way for us to create and assign textures, more detailed textures, to our 3D objects in our scene here. The easiest way to access the material editor is with the keyboard shortcut, the M key. So if I hit M on my keyboard shortcut, it will open up my material editor. So this is the basic default mode, it's more of the compact mode of the material editor which shows you all the basic parameters. There's actually another mode which I can explain later. Uh, but this is the basic default mode, uh, but in 2011, if you have a later version like 2011, uh, then it might come up with a more uh, detailed slate form, but I can show you the difference later. But we'll talk about the basic default mode to begin with. So this is a way for us to add textures to our 3D objects. So at, right off the bat at the top we have the basic shader nodes here and as in, default in 3ds Max you don't actually create new shader nodes there's a limitless amount of shader nodes already created for us so you're just kind of editing the nodes that are available. So this is our uh, three by two setup here as we have as default. Uh, you can actually change the p difference between the different uh, cycling of five by three, six by four, but we're going to go back to three by two for right now. So on the right side of the shader nodes is some basic options for the parameters of how that shader node looks uh, which doesn't really affect the actual texture but can show the difference like the show, show background button here turn that on and off it'll help if it's a transparent shader to be easily be able to see it some tiling some other options over here underneath the shader node is our uh, main options for editing and adding shaders to objects and pulling in 2d files to create a texture from so the main the first thing you want to do when you ever create a new shader or create a new texture is to go ahead and select one of the shader nodes and go ahead and rename this. I'm going to rename this ball and this center section right here is the easiest way to do this. And I'm going to label the second one box. So I go ahead and now since I only have two objects in my scene, I just want to go ahead and rename those. So the second thing I want to do is actually apply my shader to my object. So there's really two main ways to do this. I can select my shader, and this is my ball shader, so I'm going to select my ball object. And if I come up here in the horizontal bar underneath my shaders, is some, the tools as I explained earlier, a way for to be able to add the uh, shaders to the objects. So the third button from the left is the assign material to selection button, and that applies the shader to the object. So I'm going to go over here and move to the box shader and apply this to my box object by clicking the assign material to selected button. So now I'm ready to edit these shaders so I have a textured way I want it to look. So underneath that, the basic parameters, I'm able to change the way uh, my shader looks, whether that's dealing with a specular highlight or not, by changing it between a, a anisotropic blend, metal, a multi-layer, a fong. But what, what I'm going to do right now is just actually use the basic blend. And I can choose the way it's set up as default. If I want it to be wireframe, it'll change that view to wireframe, uh, or two-sided, face map, or even faceted. So I can change some of those basic options. Then underneath that is the way area for me to actually change the coloration, the transparency, the specular, which is the highlight, uh, the ambient, uh, which is the shadows, and some other basic options. So if I go back to my ball, and the way to be able to see that an, a shader is applied to an object in the scene is that you'll see a, a triangle in each of the four corners of that shader. So here these two were able to see that these are applied to objects in the scene through the use of the triangles in the corner and this third one over here is not. So also another thing to pay attention to or to understand is that uh, there's a basic standard or type of material that you need to select uh, and as default in the regular 3ds Max it should be standard but if you have a design feature of state 3ds Max then the default might be as the second one is where it says architectural and design. So if I ever want to change that, I can select the object or the shader I want to change and click that architectural design or standard, whatever it says, and it'll show me my material map browser, and I can change this to whatever I want to, and I'm just going to choose standard as right now, and then click OK. So it changes the basic parameters of it. just depends on what your outcome is and how you want it to render. So let's go back to the ball here. So the first thing you'll probably want to do is change the coloration of it. So if I just want to change the object to a basic color, uh, in 3ds Max call this the diffuse node so same thing color diffuse so if I actually go over here and click on the swatch where it says diffuse and I can change this to whatever color I want to so maybe a kind of a purplish blue color so right now the ambient color and then the diffuse color is connected together 
uh, are locked together so when you change one it changes the other one then you could also turn that off and change the ambient color later so once you click it back on it will say do you want to lock it or not and click yes so that's the way to actually uh, add a basic coloration to this so if you want to add a more detailed color from a 2D map or maybe some presets that are done in 3ds max let's move over to the box here and my box shader and I want to click on that little square to the right of that diffuse swatch so the little square to the right is actually the map button which allows me to apply more detailed textures or the ones that I create in the three, another program like uh, Photoshop or ones that are default in here so if I want to create one that I created in Photoshop I would just click on the bitmap button but for right now I just want to use one of the basic ones that are created so maybe this cellu cellular one so I click on that one and click OK and now to create a basic cellular uh, texture for this. So this is actually a procedural texture that's already created, but you could pull in your own texture if you wanted to. Now the one thing that I notice is that it's not showing up on my box. The main thing is I have to go turn on the button that says show standard map and viewport. So it's this button right here uh, under the horizontal toolbar. If I click that it'll show up in my viewport and show me what it looks like. And also if I hit the render button it'll show me more detailed, more refined render. So the render button is up here in the top right of the toolbar and uh, it looks like a tea kettle. So if I click that take a second to render but it'll show me a final render of my objects here so there's my basic diffuse color then there's also on the box my more defined diffuse color from a actual texture so the other thing to remember once you actually apply a texture to a node is that is the hierarchy system in 3ds max uh, works off parenting and child so the very top node is the shader node so that would be the parent and anything you do after that like applying a map like we did here for this texture it's a child node so what you might have to do is if you're in the child node you're able to edit these options for that the way that node actually looks uh, but then if you want to get back to the shader uh, the button on the horizontal toolbar looks like a circle with an arrow pointing up this is the go to parent which will pull you back to the very top node here so that's a very important uh, node as well so some other options is the opacity I can go change the opacity of my sphere here uh, and this will, is under here it says opacity which is the transparency so I turn that down to 50 and it will change the transparency so now my ball is semi transparent but it will still show the shadows so that's the opacity I can turn that back up to sh show this a little bit easier there's also the specular level and right now it's uh, very low or uh, zone zero so there is no specular highlight which is the actual highlight on the object from a light source so a simulated light source so I can actually the specular hot color change this by uh, clicking on the color swatch besides specular. We'll come back to that in a second. The actual highlights I need to turn up my specular level. So let's change this to like 150. And you automatically see a specular highlight on there. But let's change the glossiness up to higher value as well. So the higher the values of the glossiness and specular level, it'll look more like a metal object or a shiny object. So I can also render this out and show you the final look of it. So it look like a shiny object. Then you can also actually change that specular color, changing this to a red color, and it'll change that highlight to more of a red color now. So that's actually the specular highlight. So another one is actually the self illumination. So I can put this value up to something above zero. It'll look like this object is self illuminating, although this object isn't going to be showing any light source on the other objects. But this is a way to show basic objects uh, as self illumination so the final thing I was going to show you is the ambient option here which is actually the way the shadows look and how deep those shadows are on the object so let's turn that self illumination down to zero so we have to see that shadow there so if I unclick the lock button which is beside the ambient diffuse and if I change this to a darker value here it will eventually start whoops pull this down more a darker value it'll show you a more darker shadow here so if I hit 8 to turn on my environment and effects here and if I turn my ambient up to a lighter gray it'll change my shadows here so I'll be able to see more prominent uh, ambient shadows in my scene so I can change these values of the ambient shadow node uh, to be able to change this exactly how I want to so you'll be able to see this however you want to and if you change this value up and down you'll mainly be able to see it change and you can render this out to be able to see a ambient shadow change as well so there's some ways to be able to define the shader nodes here to have a more defined texture.